Welcome to Geek Over Coffee. In the time it takes you to enjoy a cup of coffee, I'll give you tips, tricks, tutorials, and help. I'm your host geek, Russell Sinclair. So grab a cup of joe and let's get started. Today I'm going to talk about virus protection for your Windows computer. Now out there in the world there are programmers who love to write software that installs itself on your computer without your knowledge and does anything from serving up advertisements that you don't want to putting all of your information out on the internet. This type of software is called a computer virus. Now sadly once your computer is infected with a virus the only thing you can really do is to format your hard drive and reinstall Windows. At that point you might want to consider installing a piece of software called an antivirus software. Now before I begin I would like to point out that if you're already running a piece of software such as Norton Antivirus or AVG Antivirus, you do not want to install another piece of antivirus software. The two programs will end up fighting each other and will cause you many more problems. However, if you don't have any software like this, I highly recommend Microsoft Security Essentials. Today I'm going to show you how to install Microsoft Security Essentials. All right, so we're at our Windows desktop. And in the lower right hand corner, we see a flag with this little red circle. It says solve PC issues, one important message. Well, we click on that and we see find an antivirus program online, important. Well, that's what we're about to do. So we open up our browser to Microsoft Security Essentials website. Here's the URL. I'll go ahead and put it in the show notes. All we do is we click free download. It asks if we want to go ahead and run it. We go ahead and say run. It downloads it. It runs a brief scan. This may or may not happen for you. And then it says user account control. And it asks do we want to actually run this? Well we're going to go ahead and say yes because it's from Microsoft. We know that and we trust it. And it starts up our Microsoft Security Essentials Installation Wizard. We go ahead and click Next. Prompts us with, do we accept these software license terms? We click I accept. Then it asks if we want to join the Customer Experience Improvement Program. All this is, is it something, it's a part of the software that sends information back to Microsoft that basically says how is this software running? Note, it does not actually give Microsoft any information about you, and you can opt out of it at any time. Well, we're going to go ahead and join it because we want to give Microsoft the information it needs so that it can make this tool better. And we click Next. It then says Optimize Security. If no firewall is turned on, turn on Windows Firewall. Recommended, and it's checked. All a firewall is, is it's part of Windows that protects Windows from attacks from the internet. It doesn't really hurt anything, it just keeps your computer safer, so we're going to leave that checked and we're going to click Next. And it starts installing. It asks, are we ready? Yes. And it starts the installation process. This can take a couple minutes as it says, but uh, usually it's fairly quick. The core of the software is downloaded and installed. We see that our little warning is gone. It asks, do we want to scan our computer for threats after getting the latest updates? And it's automatically checked. We want to leave that checked because we do want to let it go ahead and run its initial scan. So we click Finish. And it starts up. Now it says the computer status is at risk because it hasn't actually updated its definitions and it hasn't run the initial scan. When we're done, this will go away. We see it is downloading and installing the latest definitions.
Don't worry about this message. It has to briefly turn off so it can install, but it turns back on, and it runs its first quick scan. At this point, you might want to go ahead and grab another cup of coffee while it installs. This can take anywhere from about five minutes to probably about 15 minutes. And now, through the magic of technology, we've skipped to the end. We see that the scan's completed. It didn't find any threats. Our definitions are up to date, and the real-time protection is on. All the real-time protection is, is it's basically telling you every time you hit a website or try and download something, it will run a scan to make sure everything is safe. Now I'm going to show you a, a couple of options here that you may or may not be interested in. But for the most part, you don't really need to worry about this. We can go over here and click on Settings. Now I want you to notice that by default, that is automatically, it, run, it says to run a scheduled scan every Sunday at 2 a.m. Now I'm not normally on my computer at Sunday at 2 a.m., so this works for me. I, if I wanted, I could choose a different day, or even to have it run every day, and I could choose a different time. As far as scan type, it does a quick scan, but I could tell it, let's actually run a deeper scan and check everything. Most of the time, you don't need to worry about this, but if you're extra paranoid, go ahead and select full scan. There's nothing wrong with that. Here, I have it set that it will check for the latest virus and spyware definitions before running the scan. It'll only run the scan when the computer's turned on, but I'm not using it. If I uncheck this, it will run it even if I am using it. And finally, limit CPU usage during scan. That is, how hard, how much time will the computer devote to actually doing the scan? Changing this will only change how long it takes to run the scan. I would go ahead and leave this at 50%. Anyway, that's all there is to it. We don't really need to worry about any of these other settings. So we go ahead and we click close. We see in the lower right hand corner that we have our little green house and it says computer status protected. That's all there is to it. Now some of you are saying, hey Russell, this is all great. I use a Macintosh. What do I do? Well, unfortunately, Macintoshes are not completely safe from viruses. At this point, there aren't many viruses out there that really take advantage of Macintoshes. This also means there aren't a lot of antivirus softwares out for it. In the future, I will either go over or provide a link to information about installing an antivirus for Macintosh. In the meantime, go out, enjoy your technology, and have fun!